No. Come on, kids, right here. Stevie Wonder. I'm a member of ABA of Wisconsin. I represent motorcyclists in both states, and I'm licensed to practice law in both states. That's only part of the reason I'm here tonight. All right. And we will be open on Saturday. Rules of conduct will get you thrown out some merriments. So, uh, you won't even get a hearing on that one. Uh, with us tonight is the city librarian, Kate Houston, down here. She's a delightful lady to work with. And also with us tonight is a delightful and hardworking lady who's a member of the staff, Lorelei Stark. Yes. eventually came out as the Holy Ranger's free hand. I think the way to introduce Marty best is to read one of his poems. Midsummer on a Harley Davidson. Wisconsin cornfields strangled without water, and gravel shoulders coughing dust in the wake of that 18-wheeler ahead so the downshift, and then faster, onto this county trunk, as blackbirds chatter, stick in the windless hum of tires going to the broken yellow lines as a center, for the holy morning ride. Without further ado, the writer of that poem and many more, which I absolutely love, Dr. Martin Jack Rosenblum, also known as the Holy Ranger. I want to welcome you all here tonight, and uh, you'll have to forgive me for walking out a little slowly. In uh, 1963, one of my beloved Harley Davidson motorcycles, which was a Kickstarter bike, kicked back on me and threw me through the roof of my grandmother's chicken coop where I would hide my motorcycles from my parents who really had a problem with uh, this person who was about to be Bar but riding a Harley. Well, I've re-injured it. I still do uh, kickstart motorcycles, so I'm a little, little slow tonight, but uh, once uh, the program gets going and I uh, amble off, you're going to hear something that really is very important. And my role here tonight is to kind of framework precisely what is meant by biker poetry. The unique thing about it is that it very characteristically is almost exclusively related to the Harley Davidson motorcycling experience. And that's not simply by chance, uh, as I'm sure all of you here who ride know, that when you ride a Harley Davidson motorcycle, there's this wonderful, what I like to call, folk process that goes on between you and your motorcycle, such that you, you really want to challenge your vision of what it is to ride and what life is all about, and biker poetry does just that. I'm going to introduce uh, Gina Woods here in a moment, and I want to thank her for putting this program together, and she'll introduce the poets to you. And what you're going to find with every single writer is an exuberance and an original inspiration. Uh, I, I have suffered 24 years in academia before I went probably to work for the Harley Davidson Motor Company as the company historian. And one of the things I began to see in academia is how poetry was literally uh, taken out of the hands of the inspired people 
and put into the gloved hands of professorial types and uh, people who would go to workshops and learn how to read, how, 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 to, how to write poetry. And reading poetry out loud was lost. The oral tradition of poetry really has been essentially uh, lost because of the academic sensibility. And the neat thing about, about biker poetry is that it really uh, obviously appears on a page, absolutely, of course, that's the nature of poetry, but it is meant, it is meant to be heard, meant to be experienced. And the people who write it, the people here tonight, are inspired, they're visionary, they have poetry as their way of life, as opposed to something that is, is, is a learned experience. Their poetry comes out of the motorcycling experience, specifically the Harley Davidson motorcycling experience. And so in that way, uh, people who ride Harley Davidson motorcycles really are folk poets, and the people here tonight have absolutely, without a doubt, prepared a program for you that will demonstrate this. So I want to thank you all very much for coming tonight. And I want to now turn this program over to Gina and the poets who are here tonight to sing for you. Because that's what poetry is. It's melody. Let them sing. Hello, Gina. Hello, my name is Gina Woods, and I'd like to introduce my partner, Chris Tigerly. Hello. And we are Open Road Radio. Open Road Radio is a motorcycle talk radio show that broadcasts from the greater Chicagoland area. We're also now available on your computer via the World Wide Web at www.theautochannel.com. Live Thursdays are from the archives at any time. Our show reports on news, legislation, racing, events, people, clubs, and lots more like audience participation. We're for owners of all makes and models of bikes and all styles of riding. Right now, we're up to our ears in Viper Poetry. And we'd like to thank the Milwaukee Public Library for inviting us to help them with this landmark event, Marty Rosenblum for joining us tonight, and you, the audience, for giving us a reason to be here. And of course, special thanks to our poets, who risk everything with their special brand of expression and entertainment in a performance we hope will engage and involve you and uh, make you think and hopefully laugh also. They call themselves the Word Pirates and describe themselves as a collection of Chicago biker poets and poet bikers who have performed at clubhouses, bars, swap meets, and Harley dealerships around Chicago over the past five years. I've been at some biker poetry slams in the past and enjoyed them so much. We used the ideas for one of our live remotes in Chicago recently, inviting some of the talent I've already seen in action, which is how we came up with this core group, the Word Pirates. We work very hard at meeting tonight's entertainment. We hope you enjoy it. And we all hope to return with Biker Poetry Night in the future. So if anybody out there is a biker poet, contact us after the show. Call us or email us later and get on our poet's mailing list so we can include you in this event in the future. And let me tag on uh, that tonight's entertainment is of an adult nature. If you have children here, you have been forewarned. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Rob Van Dyle will now explain the dumb writing game rules, which we urge you to participate in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I always like to get a shot of the audience. Yeah, let's give yourself a big hand. Hey, hey. Here, Gina. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Audience participation, I'd like to get that out of the way fast. This is called the Dumb Writing Game, and the object of the game is to let the audience select some words. We're going to use five words. Then we're going to give you the entire show. In case you have nothing else to do, you can write your own poem. You can contribute to it on stage here. When are we going to do this? How long are we going to have after the intermission? We're going to have 15 minutes at intermission okay, time. Okay. For anybody that wants to participate, now my job, I guess the first job, is to get a word. A word, one word being the word, now I'm going to pick the first word. I like the word library There's because easy. here we are in the library, and that would be a good one. And uh, I suppose, I don't know how many like words rhyme with library, but I know here's the thing. Wait a minute. Oh, you I know I'm supposed to do something. 
Kristen do it? Yeah, yeah. I guess my assistant will now bring out the... Thank you very much. Dictionaries in the. <laughs> Five rats. Is there an E on there? Aren't you a teacher? <laughs> Thank you very much. Just making sure that you're awake. Right. Second, third word, third word. Wet. Wet. Again. Ed bends beneath the wheel of his 
telescope, the last thing he sees is Mr. December bent at the hips, tits hanging loose, ass thrust toward Ed Bell. And his ratchet wrench is always cold. Grease is tattooed into his hands, hands that hold the ass of Mr. Sun. And when Ed makes love, it's in an inch of snow. Not enough to cover those high heels, but enough to make Ed wish his wife was into winter sports. <laughs> it's always December when Ed makes love, and when it's real, it's in an inch of snow in Ed's garage over the handles of a 63 pan head. With Miss December shivering in delight. It's always December in Ed's garage. All right. It started. And man, when it did, the noise it made, I thought I was going to swallow my heart. The ground was shaken beneath my feet, and I began to cry. Hell, for all I knew, we were all going to die. I ran for my brother. I knew he'd save me from it all. After all, he was my hero, so big, so tall. And as I hung to his neck, not knowing what else to do, he hugged me tightly and he said, It's okay, baby. I got you. He walked over to the bike and he sat down on the seat with me still in his arms. I knew I'd be okay. He was my hero. He'd keep me safe from harm. My brother looked down at me and he said with a smile, This is a hard man. I didn't care what he called it. I was just scared the shit out of him. And he put his leather jacket on and he tucked me inside. He kissed me on the top of my head and asked, want to go for a little ride? He took me down the alley and back again and now I wonder, does he realize what he started way back then? Yeah, that was Harley Davis in 95 years. You couldn't pay a person to have a product's name tattooed on their skin. Because with a product that instills a family with it, it's, it's a different ball game. There's a poem called Harley. Riding my Harley, American maid. I'd drive around the world if the oceans were paved. A feeling of power, like flying that's fun. It's fast and it's freedom, not for everyone. Kicker she roars, cracker she leaps. When riding sweet Harley, my feelings release. Now release. The highway's red carpets, the stage for us strut. Dance, I am pony, show my stuff. Fire exploding under my ass. Hand on the throttle, she'll do anything for gas. Chrome for armor, steel for a soul. Beast machine, I want you to know I love you. Uh, <laughs> Jesus rode a motorcycle. He might ride a Harley, but it would be a 
Pinky 73 sporty. With no grace. I am the a humble heart. And a less litigious leak. And no grace. Oh hell. Well, even my father couldn't ride me out of that. <laughs> Jesus rode a motorcycle. He would ride everyone he would. Tell his brothers and sisters to do what must be done to heal all this road rash of hate and bigotry. Because when you help another brother, you are surely helping me. And I got news for you. Jesus rides the motorcycle. And he has his fun. Jesus rides a motorcycle. He rides everyone.
at Salt Lake City. Uh, it was early 50s, and so my mom would set a bus stop, probably on her way to Sunday school. She was a Mormon Sunday school teacher. And my dad pulls up on his late 40s Harley and proceeds to pay her off. Now, of course, she denies it, but that's how they can. So this poem is dedicated to my mother and father, and it's called Harley and Hill. When she lifted her knee, he saw my brain. Smooth, white, keys, hear his mom play. Sunday afternoon, locked deep in the bathroom, he'd be lowering a crankshaft in the bathtub jewel with oil. And her skirt flew out. Like him, the Leela's mounting the hill. We'll make her laugh and now gravel and sagebrush. Wind and gray boulders smashing hard in her strokes for the whole damn sky sliding down on me. She looked for a minute, then touched the rear fender. I Sunday school jolted clean up through the shops. She giggled too loud. Now he knew God was a cop. The ultimate loner. But her lift did not hold her saddle seat and chassis, curling sauce pipes and spokes. Well, it was like a set of 100 on a speedometer's throat. It was like the sun kneeling, spiked heels on his leathers. He settled back. Her name was Sophie. He brushed the ignition and rose up to stop. He settled back. The slice of the Houston made a white whimper. A curly, fast, feeble, stiff provider of sparks. Books, 
with gold edge. Depression long johns cowering behind men's hats. Eighty years of life heaps high within a dumpster. As dust dipped pale fingers down through the alley, we reeled like children with our fine, filling the trunk up to the top, we headed back. Later, in our own home, boxes smelled of thick, pre-war cardboard. Dresses took on form and swirled in a dance that only ghosts know. You put on the old man's straw hat like a carnival barker straight off the boat. And I poked the eyes of a young woman's face, the frantic swoon of the flesh held back. And we made love, smelling of mustiness, smelling of strangers, smelling of decades perspiring till dawn, the ancient scent all lovers know.
It's the skill of riding a Harley, putting on the miles, bar hopping town to town and giving ladies smiles, eating bugs for breakfast, splattered across your face and beard, dancing with the raindrops and snow, the stares from cages that think you're weird. Standing up for your brothers, even though you know they might be wrong, giving them the shirt off your back, now to them it does belong. Your kitchen floor filled with all knucklehead parts, and that oil that just won't wash off your hands, and finding a sweet old lady to put up with all this shit. She even gets out of the can. You see, to be a biker is a way of life. It takes years to understand, not tons of money. But thank God for those eager wannabes. We gotta sell our old bikes to somebody. <laughs> Now, speaking of that wannabe thing, you, you also bring citizens. The citizens are all over. We all fought them today through the rain and the highways, and the citizens are kind of looking at us like you're insane, man. It's raining out. I won't even drive with my windows down. Okay, this one I call stare. I don't know. I get these stares. Maybe it's the way I look today. I don't know. You put down my lifestyle. You put down my clothes. At least I ain't no pervert who wears pantyhose. <laughs> I wear my vest and my boots and my patches and my pins. My clothes are just a story of the places that I've been. So much laughter and so much fun. So many parties and so many runs. You stare at me like I'm a piece of shit. Because my leathers ain't polished. And my bike ain't so mint. You know exactly who I am and you know exactly what I do. Because you can tell my whole life story from every tattoo. I don't want your opinions, suggestions, or more. Leave your comments at home or you might wind up on the floor. I'm not trying to hide or blend in with your fancy dress. I'd rather live my life free than look like you and the rest. I'm proud of who I am. I ain't ashamed. Harley oil's in my blood, cross pistons in my brain. There's no white sheet over my head. If you screw with me, I'll fill you with lead. No, I, I ain't playing no citizenship. If I was Ken, I'd show Barbie the whip. If I breed ain't fake, we're loyal and true. If you don't like me, tell me fuck you. We're up for people who live in defiance. Because we refuse to live in your world with all its compliance. So next time you see that bike on the road, don't put it down because of his clothes. Instead, stare real hard, but not at the bro. You're the one with no freedom. You've sold your own soul. Right on! Stare! Come on, go! Alright, I'm just gonna give him something to stare at a little bit. This is what I call riding fool. Every morning when I wake up and I get out of bed, I for an aspirin to cure my aching head. I look out the window, the sun is beating red. My garage is calling me to fire up my pan head. So I stumble to the kitchen. I grab the day's first beer. It's the breakfast of champions. Man, I ain't no queer. I'll kick around my clothes and try to get myself all in her shine. I looked at the way she sat so proud and I kind of wished that she was mine. A seat built for a spring post, leather soft enough to lick, with a cad plated grease fitting to keep everything moving slick. I checked out her linkage, all the controls were in the right place. I could tell she was responsive, that she'd probably set the pace. She had twin headlights, kind of like a 29, and when I flipped the switch to my surprise, her brights began to shine. When I asked for a ride, with a face made for poker, I heard someone say, I only ride strokers. I've been shot, peened, and magnafluxed, I said with a grin. But I think you'd fit nicely on my oversized pin. She had long legs for running, but I kept her in check. I tickled her throat board and said, what the heck? I redlined the gauges, brought the eyes up just for fun. She heated up quickly, kind of like a midday sun. 
So I twisted the throttle and off we did go. I run her out in all the gears just to make her blow and when we settled in on a manageable pace, I suddenly felt the urge and came right in her face. <laughs> inspired by my old man, I made him dinner one night and decided he didn't show up all night. So this is called The Call. If I'm not up when you call, call anyway. The old lady in Ameritech will definitely hear you dialing. She waits for the loud, piercing, passionate, horny waiting ring. You know, the one that will, this, will excite his old ladies pissed off longing wait, her excitable dream. The line was sleep, a line known to women all. Listen, you men, you males, you guys so damn responsible. Give us the old ladies a call, it's not so impossible. That's it. <laughs> call the letter to a friend. Dear Mike, your presence here on Earth made a difference. Your smile and sometimes hello definitely convinced us. A stand-up sort of person, who never put up any bull. Hey, we knew right away, you were kind of cool. When me and the old man met you, you showed us nothing but respect. A true biker, on that, you can bet. We just wanted to say thanks for letting us get to know you. A true friend that we knew only, even only for a little while. Thank you. Go Teddy, go Teddy. Taking shit from everyone. 
like daily bread and butter is pressed between two buns. Seems the harder that I work, the more I fall behind. Harder the stainless steel asshole spreaders. KY is for the brown eye. And special butter gloves well past my elbows. Allows my magic hands to penetrate where the sun doesn't go. And my crazy flying fingers and the expressions on their face. I almost get a hernia keeping laughter in its place. Now the snips I see. Hand and processed and made into a suit. I wear it in defiance, my armor of poop shoot. <laughs>
So wear a dress. Nice. Wear it. Don't look at me that way, Joe. Wear dress. Civilians. As we stop at the light, I look to see the civilians staring. They're staring at me. Their eyes fill with wonder, wondering what it would be like to feel the freedom of riding a bike. They see the leather, the powerful machinery, but what they don't see is the person beneath, and that person is me. As I look to my right, I see a man sitting in his cage. His eyes fill his luck with lust as his wife's filled with rage. He wants to be what we are each and every day. And she's wishing that he would look at her that way. <laughs> Light turns green, and as I slowly pull away, I smile and think to myself, man, I'm glad I don't have to live that way. <laughs> yeah! Okay, this is everybody. Everybody's always afraid of something, and sometimes when you get on your bike, there's that little thing down in here. You never know what is going to happen. This is childhood fear. So don't worry, baby. You won't fall into the well. Don't worry, baby. Your mama won't trade you for a $50 fix. Don't worry, baby. This isn't going to hurt. Don't worry, baby. Someone's always watching over you. Don't worry, baby. Your face won't appear on your own milk carton. Don't worry, baby. You won't have a scar. Don't worry, baby. This disease is not for you. Don't worry, baby. Someone's always watching over you. And parents never die or leave you without a backward thought. And children often need a good crack. Don't worry, baby. Someone's always watching over you. Don't worry, baby. Your front wheel will not fall off. Don't worry, baby. There's no pea gravel in that turn. Don't worry, baby. That state trooper in your rearview mirror is not after you. Don't worry, baby. But always look both ways. There are lessons to be learned that are not taught. Don't worry, baby. But don't stay out after dark. They never talk to strangers. Confront them. Kick them in the groin. Report them to the gas man. Don't get cover. Just say no. Bye. No joke, I've been bent, but I ain't broke. Cause I'm down with the kind, leaving violence behind. Keep green, red hair fine, fresh off the tree. Helps with HIV, chemotherapy, a coma relief with a key. Job dedication or just a mental vacation? Cause I'm down with a joint. Case in point, I'm at a wedding. The mother of the bride confronts me with pride and says, Thank you. Cause the reef of her daughter brought gave her appetite. Help us sleep at night and help to fight her cancer. Now! Yeah. Who's got an answer for that? I got a friend with MS to relieve her distress. Take a guess. So burn, baby, burn. Take your turn and learn how to come out of your corner token without choking. I have spoken. Thank you. Bring my compadre up here to do a poem that uh, we love to do together. <laughs> that hmm? night, that hot mid July night, that night that wanted to so soak our sheets. That night we rode the Harley fast to feel the cool wind. That night we rode fast to feel the bone deep vibrations that massage the knots of city life. That night, we went looking for the perfect curve, leaning in, trusting instinct, daring the asphalt, leaving Newton's laws for others to explain. Helmets, shit, we said, when we go, helmets won't help. That night, we went looking for a rainstorm, an ocean, a rock, a clouded moon, a rock, anything, something to tattoo. Tattoo, tattoo. 
We rode the Harley fast to feel the surge beneath as the wrist rolled and the wind spread our faces like clay. And when it finally rained, you held me so tight I couldn't tell the difference between you or me.